Ross the boss, thanks to points betting. Ross, we're going to do it a little bit differently today. We're going to look at uh, coaches under pressure heading into, obviously, finals and also towards the end of the year. And we'll tell you a look at the top eight market. And only two of these teams can make the finals. Uh, and, Ross... What are your thoughts there so far? I know it's hard with a run home, well, it's a but who do you like? The coin. Every team that gets themselves in the good position, when they've got expectation, they, they sort of crumble and don't get across the line. It'd be great Fremantle emerging to continue on, but I think Richmond, have, on paper, got a good draw, but we know six out of the last seven or whatever it might be, they haven't been able to get there. And St Kilda, their best in Carlton. So I think it's wide open. I, the best foot is probably played by Essendon, but defensively they leak a bit. That exposes them. Well, that top side is the West Coast Eagles, Ross. And I want to play Adam Simpson after their 45-point loss to Collingwood on Saturday afternoon. I mean, the season's still alive. We're, st we're still thereabouts, but we're not going to get far if we play like that. So we, we're, we're honest about it. We need to own it. We need to get better real quick. Otherwise, we won't get far at all. Ross, he looked a shattered man. And we want to show some vision of the Magpies, the way they moved the ball against West Coast at the MCG. And he would have been alarmed by this. Yeah, well, if you look at it, it's all corridor. Eagles at their best because how they defend. They can't let the ball through the corridor. They need an angle on the ball coming in because they don't play on you. They need it coming in long and high and slow. And Collingwood just carved them up through the corridor. But they rank 17th for pressure in their Ford 50 and all over the ground in the competition. That, that's a, they're not a great pressure team, but that's a really bad stat. And it's really just like circle work here. So I think since the Premiership and then COVID struck last year, and Tom Barras was quoted, like, we won the Premiership, but we sated a little bit, our senior players. But it's a pattern of behaviour now. I think you could draw a line to the Tim Kelly trade. Is the dynamic of that midfield the same since Tim Kelly's coming? Coming on big money, mm. first-round picks, and players like Redden who were doing the job getting pushed out to wings. Mm. You've got a query over that. And then the stand-the-mark rule, where teams can flow on and get through the corridor more, has exposed their defence. So I think it's a few things that mm. Adam... but. He's continuously getting frustrated by yeah. their inconsistent performances. Yeah, they concede 166 marks against Collingwood. It's one of the most we've ever seen. So that's a fair place to start. I want to ask you about the Tigers, Ross. So, won three of the last four premiers. Look at Hardwick after the game. He'd get his team up week after week, but they're just not quite been able to get over the line. And not only him, they were self-driven, got yeah. themselves up. So, I think he's coming to grips with a new reality. I think we all are. So, Lee Matthews, your reputation yeah. on the build-up lags where you're at. Yeah. And then when you're on the downward slide, you stay at the top and it takes a while for us to understand you've slipped. So I think even Damien, he's used to having a you know, group one and winner that he's yeah. riding and now he's got a different horse underneath. So I think he's adapting his new reality. I think with soldiers back, they can get it done. I wouldn't ride off the air. I think they can come again. But mentally, it'd be a challenge when you used to push him down yeah. the race and away they went. Yeah. So it's a, he's back to really challenging coaching well, again. Well, they've always found a way. And I've been listening to Jack Revolt and David Asprey over the last five or six weeks. And they keep thinking things are going to change. And it quite, hasn't quite happened. People have been waiting for, for their opportunity to sink their boots into us because we have been so successful for a long time. Um, but good, good luck if you're playing us in the last seven weeks. I mean, where, wherever we sit on the ladder. And we 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 got a firm belief that we're, we're a bloody good football side. We still believe that our best football is good enough. Um, we haven't been able to put it together enough this season and and at the right times. But we still really believe that the teams will be thinking about us. So Ross, this isn't a short period of time. Look at this. This is the last seven weeks at Tigerland. Well, talk's cheap, yeah. isn't it? Everyone's doing a lot of talking. Mm. Let's get into action. Yeah. Six out of seven's telling you you're not delivering over the hundred minutes. You've had moments. Let's talk, more action, get back to Tiger Tough Footy. Yeah, for sure. And we're looking at coaches and Chris Fagan and the Lions are fascinating me at the moment. And Ross, you've been here before. You've vented on your players. He's thrown this at them, I reckon, three of the last four weeks. And how many how many goes can you have at this? No, well, Dennis, you only got two big cooks. If you're going down every first quarter, time huddle and doing that, there's something wrong. In my view, they beat Geelong, who was their nemesis, yeah. knocked him out last year. It was a thumping win. It was like, wherever it arrived. I've called that, used to talk about the glow of success, mm. wherever arrived. And then everyone just takes little liberties, mm. maybe in training and preparation, or Lockie Neal will do it, or Danaher will do it. And all of a sudden, you blink and you're a mediocre team. Yeah. And make no mistake, they're a mediocre team. Interstate, they only win 30% of the time. One in three, they don't handle that well. And the other thing now, Chris is coaching with expectation. Yeah. Bigger expectation than he's ever had before. They've had a couple of injuries. They need to reset and realign and get back to what they value as a football team. 
And, and don't wait to the last quarter before you start playing on and playing through the yeah, corridor. Yeah. That last man on my left is Stewie Duke. And looking at him in the box after that game against Melbourne, he was shell-shocked. Look at this. The last six quarters, 31 goals 29 to 5 goals 11, Ross. Well, yeah, look, it, look. I think Stewie, I've got a lot of time yeah. for Stewie, but the numbers mm. aren't good. If you're a Melbourne club, big Melbourne club, you'd be in deep, deep water. Yeah. And then the optic of the CEO sitting in the coach's box. I think he's done it before when they're going OK. But now we all jump on it. It's not a good look. He wouldn't feel that comfortable. I feel for him. It's an outpost. To be honest, until they start winning or get some relevance, you don't take that much interest in them. Yeah, for sure. Carlton on the Gold Coast is a game I want to look at because of one reason. That's Jacob Weedering. I found this fascinating last week against Max King, the brother of Ben King, and the way he played at Ross. So here is, uh, obviously, uh, Jacob Weedering. He would try to get really aggressive. So he rolled the vision of Weedering. And I just saw early in the game, all he wanted to do was try and work over King. And I think it's not his game, Ross. He was trying to be smash him in the back, hit him. And before he knew it, he's giving away free kicks, conceding goals. Well, Stephen Silvani used to talk to me. He'd walk out and blokes start whacking yeah. the ball, come and they'd be off yeah. him. So he would not whack him. And then when the ball was there, he'd be on him. So I think once Weedering got back to, you know, when the ball comes, I'll put good, good, sorry about that, good body work yeah. into you. He played his best footy. Yeah. Like, King kicked three early, mm. got off him. But then once he got in the body work, he got well on top and dominated the defence. So he'll learn from that, I think, playing on uh, Ben King. But I just want to ask you quickly, did you ever have players go targeting the opposition players? One quick story for me? No, no uh, not really. Not really? No, I said, yeah, well, you'd always go <laughs> yeah. out to, to roughly if taggers, like a team attack on yeah. the tagger, give him room, or might be a Brad Hill playing Hawthorne in a prelim. Yeah. It might have been Matty DeBoer. Like, okay. if you can sort of cork him in the leg, maybe <laughs> cork him in the leg. But, uh, look, by Caroline's old Richmond standards, you know, in the... Uh, 80s and 70s. That, that's pretty gentle. Now, integrity of selection. I thought David Teague, Ross, made stronger moves, and that was to bring in O'Brien and Honey for Betts and, uh, and Petrescu yeah. Seaton, and they got rewards for I it. don't want to make it about those two yeah. guys because I can tell you about their form, but we did talk about it early yes. in the year, and integrity of selection is every time you pick a team, you send a message to your playing group, your club and your supporters about what you value. So if you're saying to the players, I value chasing and going hard, and then you're picking blokes they mightn't be doing it. The players know, and they think, well, you've got up for gigs. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, the effort levels drop. But once you restore that, and you get the enthusiasm of some youth, mm. and the integrity and the dynamics, dynamics restored, well, you, you give yourself the best chance to play good for And you think they'd win comfortably against the Suns? Well, on paper, but yeah. I just think it's such an unpredictable season with COVID, travel, struggles, that anything can happen. No one's safe in this competition. Yeah. The other game we wanted to look at was St Kilda, who are under pressure up against the side that is flying in the Sydney Swans, and Dougal Howard is out. So the last play player they wanted <laughs> to lose, because we saw, uh, yeah, obviously we'll get to that soon, that match-up with Wilkie and who'll have to take on. But, Ross, how far they've dropped... Because this is them last year beating the Western Bulldogs. And look at the two positions there Well, let's now. look at it. 19 shots to 17. The Saints, for a change, kicked accurately. I watched it. I think it was a misleading result. It was great to win a final, but they lost entries by 16. Mm. The Bulldogs dominated a lot of categories. If they kick straight, maybe they win. But, and the Saints dominated. The Bulldogs have fixed their def tall defence up and just boomed along. With St Kilda actually had some deficiencies in that game that was masked over. So, yeah. And I think maybe bringing McKernan and Frawley in, they thought they were closer than what they yeah, were. Yeah, maybe sometimes you need yeah. depth players to think if you know, Dougal Howard falls over, got, we're thin and key defenders. I can understand yeah. that. But they're, they're not... They're nowhere near yeah. the list profile that the Bulldogs were. And I think they'll say that internally now. And, and this weekend, they're going to be exposed. I'm yeah. not sure if Frawley gets back, no. but the Swans have got a lot of tall forwards they're going to yeah, have to deal Yeah, we'll look with. at that. So, Callum Wilkie last week, when Howard went off, this is what happened. So, he's just undersized. He's good on the second or third, but he just couldn't go with Mackay. He's probably got to play on Franklin this well, week. Well, they're tall, big men. 200 centimetres. I'm not even sure. What's Wilkie? Yeah. 190, 90, 192? Yeah. Like... He can't even get up to the to the span and the height. So this week comes in. So you've got Reid, who's 196. You've got Franklin, who's 196 or taller, superstar of the game. And then you've got Haywood. Yes. And then just when you think that's <laughs> over, guess what? There's a real... Isaac Heaney. So they got... The, unless that midfield of the Saints puts on some pressure... Mm. Wilkie's going to have a really tough day. At Marvel Stadium, do you give the Saints a sneak, sneaky chance? Well, as I said, yeah. anyone's a chance. But I watched Sydney last yeah. week. They're number one and two for attack and defence. They're flying. This, they're actually taking the opportunity to stand the rule. They're overlapping. They're hitting targets. 
They're scoring at will. I think Sydney get it done. Long as the midfield stand up. Ed, 7th, 8th, ninth, and 10th all play sides in the top five or six. So it's a huge surround of footy.